19.2, page 284, question 4. Um, it's tough trying to read it anyway. It says A to M, there it goes, A to M, just that part only, is um, equal to two lots of M, C. So in other words, A to M is twice as big as M to C. And that means A to M, I'm told, is 2B. So straight away, begin to fill up the vectors on diagram. So if that is, for example, 2, it's not connecting well. If that is, for example, 2B, because that's what it says, that means if that's twice as long as M to C, then M to C in that direction must be B as well. All right? So let's just revise that. A to M is 2 MCs. So that's 2 2 MC, so if MC is a B, then AM is two Bs, and that's what they've given us there. That's easy. Now I'm told that NC is a third of a BC, so let's just write that properly. It's a third of the vector BC. So NC is a third of BC. So let's have a look. If that's a third of it, this must be two thirds, I'm guessing. So this part is worth C. So N, no, NC is C. Done. And and NC, that is two thirds. If I rewrite, look, how about this, eh? Um, three lots of NC equals BC. So BC is going to be three lots of NC. So therefore, three lots of NC, um, that's going to be from B to C. Let's just do a rough sketch from there to there. You're looking at three lots of NC, in other words, three C's, and if it's three C's from there to there, and that's a C, this is worth two C, okay? A little bit of gymnastics, sorry about the rapid fire confusion there. Uh, I'll do that one more time because it is tricky. Again, the way it was set out threw me a bit as well. From N to C, the vector C, no problem. But BC is only a third of a C. So BC, the whole thing, is a third of a C. Therefore, the whole BC must be three lots of C. And therefore, B to N alone must be two C. So what have I got? I've got three Bs from there to there, and I've got um, three Cs from there to there. Now we're going to do some business. Here we go. Uh, find NM in terms of B and C. N to M. So let's just draw it in quickly. N to M. Oh, it's not very good. So I dropped it. So delete that quickly and try again. N to M. I can't have that. And let's go blues now. N to M in that direction. How do we go from N to M? N to C, then C to M. Very, very easy. So NM equals from N to C, and then go from C to M. Look, NM at the ends. So that's going to be a single C and a minus a B because we're going against the flow of B. So it's basically C minus B. Very, very easy. Let me just label it so it could be useful for later. That's C minus B. That's that one there. Now, find AB in terms of B and C. Very easy. A to B goes in that direction. So going from A to B, I must go from A to C. And let's just jump straight in. From A to C, I've got 3B. And then to go from C to B, I must go minus 3C. All right? Because I'm coming against the flow of the C there and against the flow of the two Cs there. So it's 3B minus 3C. So Danny says that AB and NM are parallel. Well, let's look at this, shall we? So that's 3B minus 3C. Now, listen to Danny. Um, Danny says that AB and NM are parallel. Is he right? Well, let's just let, look at the vector, shall we? So I'm looking at AB. AB is defined as 3B minus 3C. And uh, I can factorize that. And that could be 3 bracket B minus C. Now, we're looking at now NM. NM is essentially C minus B. Or I can say MN. Remember, I'm looking at to test the parallelness of the two lines, not the direction. So if I go call it NM, I can write it around the other way. Minus B. Uh, sorry, that's not right. It's going to be B minus C, isn't it? In other words, minus C minus B. So if I put a minus in front of that, 
minus 1 times C is minus C and minus 1 times minus B is plus B. In other words, B minus C. Now, what have I got here? I have got three lots of B minus C for vector AB and B minus C for vector MN. So let's have a conclusion. Three lots of B minus C and one lot of B minus C. Um, have a common uh, vector B minus C therefore they are in the same direction and hence parallel alright so that's that one um, that's what I make it. I'm very happy with that. I, might have not, I may not have used the wording perfect. Now let me pause and get the wording from the book in case it's better than mine. Or, yeah, it simply states here that they are parallel because AB is a multiple of NM. I oversaid it. Okay, This is AB, as you can see, and this is um, NM or MN. Makes no difference. Um, yeah, they have a common vector, that, therefore they are in the same direction, therefore parallel. Yeah, they are parallel because AB is a multiple of NM. Yeah, that's three times as big as that. Easy peasy. N to M, C minus B. Beautiful. Right, that's that. Question 5, page 285. A, B, C, D is a trapezium. That's what it says there. A, B, C, D, that's a trapezium. That's going to be quite important to know that. And A, B, E, D, A, B, E, D is a parallelogram so straight away what I'm going to do is put a little a just there because if this is a parallelogram then that's a and so is that and also by the same token vector b is also here because b e is parallel to a d vector b therefore running the same direction in parallel right that's that part it then says that a b is defined as little a a d is little b yeah, I've got that and c d is two times the length of a, B. So C, D from there to there is twice the length of A to B. And therefore, if, if D to E is A, then the remaining part, E to C, is also A. Again, E to get fooled by the diagram. It's not done to scale. It doesn't even say that it's not done to scale. But clearly, um, D, E looks an awful lot bigger than E to C. And A to B looks a lot bigger than E to C as well. But you know, mathematically, that's what the vectors are. Alright, so I've now got everything on the diagram that I need. Let's just take it one little bit at a time. D to C then, how big is D to C? Well, I've got it there. A plus A, that's going to be two ways. What about A to C? A to C, I can go down the B root plus the two A's. So A, sorry, B plus A plus A, that's going to be 2A plus B, or B plus 2A. Um, D to B, how do we go from D to B? Well, I'm going to go um, up here from D to A, then A to B. So that's going to be minus B plus A, or B minus A. Sorry, minus B plus A, or A minus B rather. So, minus B plus A, A minus B, same thing. And B to E, we know it's just um, little vector B anyway, because it's parallel to AD. I'm told it's a parallelogram, so that's where I'm getting that from. A to E, very easy. How do you get from A to E direct? Let's just draw it in any way. A to E in that direction, as so. How do we do that? Well, A to B, then B to E. Therefore, the answer is A plus B. Very, very easy. And what about E to C? Well, I've done that before when I realized, that, of course, that D, E, and E, C are the same vector. So that's little vector A from before. And finally, vector BC. Um, BC, 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 BC. B to C, I can go B plus A. Okay, from B to C, in that direction, that's going to be B plus A, or A plus B. So I'm going to write down here, A plus B. And uh, that's fine. It says here, prove that ABCE is a parallelogram. All right then, I've got A to B is vector A, so that matches that one, doesn't it? So that matches that, 
got one pair of parallel sides. Now what about this what about this B C and A E business? Well look at A E. There it is. A E and I will label it now is clearly is clearly also A plus B. Look at that. Um, B plus A, A plus B makes no difference. And therefore if I use a different colour to make it stand out, this A plus B matches that A plus B. I've got two pairs of parallel sides and therefore it's a parallelogram. But I've got to write it out fully as if I was in the exam, so let's just do it quickly. Um, right. I can say A B equals um, E C A B in that direction equals E C get in that direction and they're both equal to vector A therefore parallel next bit um, I can say that B C is exactly the same as A E and they're, and they're both vector A plus B therefore they are parallel so if I've got two pairs of parallel lines therefore I've got um, A, B, C, E is a parallelogram mm -hmm. I think that's right yeah not only are they parallel they're also the same vector as well therefore they are of the same magnitude, so same length, same magnitude, same direction, therefore parallel. Let's just do C now, I hope it fits there nicely. I'm told that AC crosses the line BE as a certain point called F. Alright then, let's just draw it in. Could be tricky. Change colour as well. Um, let's do a black one. So AC um, crosses BE as a point called F. So let's just label that point F. So that is F right there, right where my arrow is, and I've got to work out AF. Alright then, let's just do AF. Back to blue. <sighs> yep, let's take a look at this. Now this, this is tricky, this is a parallelogram. I've proved that it's a parallelogram from before. Therefore, if it's a parallelogram, and the two diagonals will cross right in the middle of the parallelogram. Therefore, if B to E is called vector B, that's what I'm told, sorry, B to E or E to B, makes no difference, does it? Um, yeah, if B to E is vector B, you know, in this direction, as is A to D, therefore, if it cuts in the middle, then A to F has, B to F has got to be half of B. So, let's just begin to write this out. So B E equals B, therefore um, B F equals half of a B. And I've got to do A F, haven't I? Okay, let's just do it then. So A to F equals A to B, just there, A to B, plus half a B running in that direction there. Oh, in other words, do that later. Plus A to F. Sorry, B to F. B to F, sorry. So B, do pretty. And just to show that we've done it correctly, I've gone from A to F, A to F. Now substitute A to B is baby vector A, and B to F is half a little b, and you can't simplify any further. Therefore, um, A to F is defined as vector A plus half b. And that's all there is to it. And I'll catch you later in question six going forward.